happened to do physical therapy. So um, we have a couple people that had surgery this week, literally surgery this week. Roxy had it on Tuesday, major knee surgery, and then Kevin had it on Thursday, right? Major ankle surgery. So if you see me during the service stopping and saying, okay, get up, bend, stretch and stuff, just know we're, we're, we're here to meet everybody's needs. But, um, but they are just absolutely just freaks, physical freaks of nature. It's, uh, it's crazy. So um, make sure you keep them both in your prayers and everybody else that has been going through stuff and, and healing. And uh, if we can ask, this is, uh, it's now gotten real people. I submitted my prayer to the House of Representatives. We will be there on September 10th. I will be in the Capitol saying my prayer. Uh, it will be on, I believe, on C-SPAN at 9 a.m. our time on Tuesday, September 10th. And, you know, they, they give you all these rules that you can't be political and stuff. So I, I played it smart because I know, all right, let's be real. I know this is probably the only time I'm ever going to be on TV, right? So I want to make the most of it. And I was really struggling. I thought I could just go crazy, right, and just be weird and bizarre, and I'll be on every network, right? That was tempting. But I thought, see, I thought, because you got to still be godly. So I thought, here's what I would do instead. This is my one shot to advertise the church, right? So my prayer is this. Oh, Lord, as I sit at Journey of Faith Church in Covina, California. <laughs> right? Then I go on a little bit more because I only have 150 words, so it can't be too long, right? But, but Lord, as you speak to me by emailing me at Pastor Kevin at Journey of Faith Church. And Lord, as you search my heart by going on jailfaith.com, right? See? Can't get upset at that, right? You know, I'll never be invited back. Let's see if it helps. Right? I'm just kidding. But, but please uh, keep us in prayer. I don't know if C-SPAN is going to have it on. Um, I, our, our plan is that we are going to record it, and we'll be putting it on our Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and everything else. So uh, please to continue to pray for us as well. Um, we are looking at Acts chapter 7, verses 54 through 60. And today's title of the message was Sacrificial Love. But I really feel like, um, as we were in worship, I, I really feel like God was telling me to do something else. So, um, so Andrew, or Ryder, if you can go to, because I, I feel like I need to give you the answers, because I gave you the handout, right? And so um, we paid for the, the paper and everything. So if you can go to the... Um, the slide that has all the points, you know. Sacrificial love, and what we see in Stephen is very simple. Sacrificial love requires sacrifice. It gets noticed and it honors God. And that's exactly what we see in the story of Stephen. In this chapter, this section in the Bible is where Stephen gets stoned and is ultimately killed. And, and so many times I think that we look at that passage, and rightfully so, we look at that passage and we see it as you know, a, a man standing in faith, a man standing in courage, a man honoring God and serving God. And I, and I think that is absolutely one of the ways that we should look at that passage. But I, I started feeling this last night, and then as I was sitting here in, um, in, in worship today, it just, it, it got heavier and heavier. You know, I, I have such a... Um, a weight on me right now, just such a burden. And, and I thank you for all of you that were just really getting into worship and because I wasn't. I, I just couldn't get into it. And, and it's not because of uh, the worship or, or anything else. It was just this, this burden I have for people right now. You know, we come together and, and you know, we're all broken. Amen? Amen. You are all broken. So am I. We're all broken for many different reasons, and we're all broken for, uh, for many different causes. But, but the burden that God has put on my heart, and as we look at I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the scripture to you, so don't worry. But, but the burden that God has put on my heart with this passage today really reaches out to some of us. And I'm not, not saying all of us, and I'm not saying any of us, but I believe it reaches out to some of us. You know, we're starting this uh, True Love series, and, and my whole concept is this. We can talk about following Jesus. We can talk about God's Word in the Bible and obeying it, but 
But if we don't have love, then we have nothing. And the burden that God has placed on my heart is that there are people in this church, in this community, all around the world that will sit there and say, I believe God, I follow God. My question is this. Yeah, but do you love it? I worry that there are people that are just trying to skate by, do enough, look right, so that we can convince people that we're a good Christian, that we can trick people that we're a good Christian, but, but in reality, we don't trick anybody. In reality, and it, it, I don't know if it went out or it's going out, but reality is this, our sin will always be found. Our sin will always be seen, maybe not by us, but it's always seen by God. And so why do we spend so much time trying to trick everybody around us, but God sees everything? You know, ultimately, one day, we are all going to have that final moment. And when we have that final moment, it's going to be just that final. There will be no negotiating with God. There will be no reasoning. There will be no debating. That judgment day will be final for each and every one of us. And I worry that there are too many people, and, and hear my heart, I'm not here to convict anybody. And also hear my heart, I've been there. I believed I had the equation to do just enough, to be just right enough, to live a double life. So I'm not convicting you. But ultimately one day we are going to end up in front of God and God will judge us for all we've done, all we've said. And yes, God's grace does cover us. But I think that comes to the heart. Are we playing with God? Are we messing with God? Do we honestly think that we're fooling God? And that's what I see in the story of Stephen. You know, what, what is it that, that killed Stephen? Stones? No, right? What's it saying? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but we're... No. Stones didn't kill Stephen. It was ultimately sin that killed Stephen. Stephen convicted the Jewish leaders. The Jewish leaders resented him. And they stoned him. Now, what was he convicting them? He was convicting them of sin. And see, I believe all of us are like Stephen. We might not realize it, but we have stones thrown at us every day. That sin in our lives, the sin in society that is thrown at us each and every day. And if we don't have that sacrificial love for Jesus Christ, if we don't have that true love, that commitment to Jesus Christ, then we will be hurt and we will be damaged by the sin that comes our way. And ultimately, just like Stephen, we will be killed by that sin. What was it that allowed Stephen? And let me read the passage here real quick. Sorry, bear with me. Maybe I should act like this on TV. Guaranteed to get some uh, interviews or something, right? Sorry, we updated our wife. We upgraded our Wi-Fi this week. Thank you, Jesus. I got it. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad it worked on Friday, but not today. <laughs> Acts chapter 7, verse 15 says, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed at him with their teeth. What gnashed means? He convicted them. He convicted them by the Word of God, because the Word of God is truth. The Word of God never lies, and the Word of God will always be right. So he spoke them the Word of God, and they were convicted. He said, But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand and said, look, 
I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Picture Stephen. He's sitting there and he's got all these people throwing stones at him. Have you ever been hit by a rock? It hurts. I've been hit by a rock. It hurts. But here's Stephen. He's getting stoned. And what does the Bible say? Luke tells us that his eyes are fixed on Jesus. See, he had this crazy, true love relationship with Jesus that he said, there's not going to be anything that's going to come into my life that's going to distract me from Jesus Christ and it's going to break my focus on Jesus Christ. In other words, sin was being hurled at him, but he didn't allow sin to change him, affect him, but he ignored the sin in his life and kept his focus on Jesus Christ. See, that is the example that we as Christians must follow. But we can't do that unless we love, truly love Jesus Christ. Because if we don't love Him, then why would we even do it? It's love that causes us to do crazy things. It's love that causes us to do things we don't want to do. It's love that causes us to do things that other people will think are crazy. But we do it because we love someone. And when you truly love someone, you will do absolutely anything for them. But see, there's too many people, I believe, in, in, in churches, in the Christian world, that truly don't love God. And so we may say that we love God, we may say, oh, thank you, Jesus, praise God. But when the stones start getting hurled at us, what do we do? We run. We say, ow, stop it. We lose our focus on Jesus Christ and we give into the world. See, I feel that there are people in this church right now that have stones being hurled at them. And I worry that we don't have our focus and our, our, our relationship with God right. And if we don't have the relationship with God right, then as the stones come at us, they begin to hurt us. They begin to damage us. And ultimately, if we don't deal and address with the sins in our life, then ultimately our sins will kill us. See, church, I don't know if you know this about the enemy, but we don't have to go looking for trouble because trouble comes looking for us, right? Isn't that what we saw in the serpent in Genesis and then in Job? What did God ask the enemy? He's like, I'm just looking around. I got plenty of targets. I don't really have to work hard. You all, me, are targets of the enemy. And when he sees an easy target, he will hit it. And church, I'm here to tell you, if we don't have our eyes, like, like Stephen right here, if we don't have our eyes fixed on Jesus, if we don't ignore all the sin around us, if we don't have our eyes fixed on Jesus, all the enemy is asking is that we take our eyes off for a moment. And when we take our eyes off for a moment, then we're his. And we allow that first stone to hit us. And we allow that second stone to hit us. And we allow that third stone to hit us. And before we know it, because we've taken our eyes off Jesus Christ, before we know it, we don't even realize that the stones are hitting us anymore. The first step we have to take in this relationship with Jesus Christ is figuring out whether or not we are going to be madly in love with him. Stephen didn't do all this stuff for glory or honor. Stephen didn't do all this stuff because he was trying to show off to someone. The only thing that caused Stephen to act the way he did was because he madly loved Jesus. And because he was madly in love with Jesus, he was willing to endure. He was willing to suffer. And ultimately, he was willing to die. Why would someone do that? There's only one answer, and that's love.
That's why I think true love is so important. Because we have to be willing, able, to fall madly and deeply in love with Jesus Christ. We must be willing to sacrifice. We must be willing to submit. And then ultimately, we must be willing to serve. But church, if we don't have that true love relationship with Jesus, then our walk is never going to be successful. So the rocks are being hurled at Stephen. Stephen is gazing up in heaven, seeing Jesus. I wonder if at some point Stephen's like, you done yet? I could do this all day if you want. See you, Jesus. The only way we're going to protect ourselves from the sin in this world is to have our eyes fixated on Jesus Christ. And the only way that happens is if we are truly and madly, deeply, sacrificially in love with Him. We can talk about sin all day if we want. We can talk about addictions. We can talk about all this stuff. But church, if we don't have the love for Jesus Christ, my personal opinion is that our walk is dead. Stephen, as he's being stoned, says here, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then he cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. See, church, the enemy doesn't like it when we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The enemy doesn't like it when we love Jesus Christ. The enemy doesn't like it when we begin to ignore him and keep our eyes focused on Jesus Christ. So what happens? More sin. More rocks get thrown at us. Just waiting for that chance, that opportunity. You know, there's a book out that's called Every Man's Battle, and it's something that I encourage every man to, to read. But, but one of the, the strategies that they use in there, it's called bouncing your eyes for a guy. No matter how many times we go to the gym, we're weak. We are. And Satan has a very useful tool to trip us up. And if we're not like Stephen and have our eyes fixated on Jesus Christ, what happens? We begin to look at stuff. We begin to think about stuff. We begin to do stuff that we know isn't right. And some people say, you know, for men, you know, you must be weak if you have to bounce your eyes. I'm like, man, you must be strong if you can bounce your eyes, right? Because it takes a real man to be able to bounce your eyes. It takes a real man to be able to say, no, I'm not going to allow that stuff into my life. It takes a real man to say, my heart is for Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ. It takes a real man to say, I'm going to serve him before I serve anybody else. Because church, here's the, heart. here's the deal. If our eyes aren't fixated on Jesus Christ, then who are they fixated on? Think about that. Think about that. If your actions today don't serve Jesus Christ, then who are you serving? See, we don't think about that part, right? Yeah, I, I may be sin, but we don't think about who we're serving. Stephen said, you can throw all the stones you want at me. 
not going to change anything for me. I will serve my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ till the end. Because I know He and only He will be faithful to me. I know He and only He will be there for me. And I know ultimately He and only He will love me. We get tripped up by the stones in our lives, you know, and they seem so tempting, right? The, the serpent said to Eve, like, oh, look at this nice fruit. I don't know if it was an apple or not. Everybody says apple, but look at this nice fruit. Don't you want it? Look at this nice thing on the internet. Look at this, look at that, look at whatever. And as soon as the enemy gets us to sin, he seems to disappear. In fact, sometimes he's the first one to convict us. I can't believe he did that. But Stephen kept his eyes focused on Jesus Christ. He said, God, I love you so much, I'm not going to let anything break this relationship. I'm not going to let anything break this vision and this focus. And because he wouldn't bend and he wouldn't give in to the Jewish leaders, they threw more at him. They screamed, they yelled. But the more they threw, the harder they threw, the louder they yelled. He kept his eyes focused on Jesus Christ. The more this world tempts you, the more this world teases you, This more this world trips you up, you have to keep your eyes focused on Jesus Christ. We're too weak to do it on our own. And I worry that there are people Where that there are people in our church and other churches and in the world that are acting like Stevens, but in reality behaving like Judas. Satan saw an easy target in Judas and he took it. One of the twelve. How could one of the twelve that was with Jesus Christ, that saw the miracles, how could one of the twelve fall and betray Jesus Christ. Because the enemy's good at what he does. And if the enemy could betray Judas, in church, if we don't have our eyes on Jesus and if we aren't in love with Jesus, then we're way easier to talk. as it says, and they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. See, we might not realize it, but what we think we do in private is seen by a lot of people. Sin in our life will always be found out. There has never been, just so we're clear, there's never been a sin that has not gone unnoticed. That's why you look at, and this is horrific, you look at these teachers that do stupid stuff with students, and they're shocked, like, I can't believe I got caught. Like, you thought you were going to be the only one that didn't caught? You caught? Sin will always get noticed in our lives by those people around us. And when they call us on it, they want to see how we're going to react. They watch Stephen. They were waiting for him to crack. They were waiting for him to break. Kept his eyes on Jesus. No, nope, not going to do it. Guys, pick up bigger boulders if you want. We got to get this over with, right? Not going to change who I am. 
I'm not going to lose my focus on Jesus Christ. What's crazy for the Jewish leaders, it really hacked them off. Because they expected him to be human. They expected him to be like them. And the more stones, the more sin that they threw at him, he didn't budge. I'm sure he got beat up, he got bruised, he got bloody, but he didn't budge. There was a gentleman there named Saul. We're going to talk about Saul a whole lot in a little bit, so I won't say much. There was a man watching this that would make a living killing Christians for a while. And he watched this man. And I, when we get into Paul, I will say I think Paul is probably one of the craziest men next to these two right here that I've ever seen. But imagine being the crazy man in the old in the New Testament looking at this guy saying, this guy must be certifiably nuts. We're stoning him, but he doesn't budge. We're killing him, but he doesn't cry out. He just stays focused on Jesus Christ. And I believe that's exactly what moved Paul was that he never lost his vision and his focus on Jesus. Now, I, I get that, because I've seen that once in my life. When, when Hutch passed away, and I know, yeah, another person he was with when they died. But, but when Hutch passed away, and we knew he was going to pass away, because we were there to watch him pass away. And we're in his room, and, and the whole family's there, and I'm there, and I'm at the foot of his bed, and we're singing songs, and... And, you know, that should have killed him enough when you start hearing me sing, right? And we're reading the Bible. And he kept looking up in the corner. And I didn't want to say anything, but I'm like, what, you know, is the TV on? And the TV wasn't on. And, and, and so we're still praying, we're singing, we're reading the Bible. And he just kept looking in the corner. And I'm like, well, is the, can you see your reflection on the TV there? Is there are you seeing something? His eyes were fixated on that corner. That's when I got it. He didn't see a TV. He didn't see himself. He saw Jesus. In his quote-unquote darkest, deepest moments, he had his eyes fixed on Jesus. In Stephen's darkest, deepest moments, he had his eyes fixed on Jesus. Church, for some of you right now, you may be in your darkest, deepest moments. And I'm here to tell you, the only way you are going to survive is if you have your eyes fixated on Jesus. I think at some point Stephen stopped realizing he was getting stoned. I think at some point Hutch stopped realizing he was dying. And I'll be honest with you, at some point I stopped realizing he was dying because I was so curious as to what he was looking at. But the only way we get through sin in our lives the only way we protect ourselves from the rocks, the sin that is going to be thrown at us, is if we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. I think fully well, well Saul knew what was going on. And I bet if we get to heaven and we ask Paul who he respects most in the Bible, who do you think his top two are going to be? Jesus, right? I think we all probably have just a hint. If anybody in heaven asked you who you love or respect, just say Jesus, right? But I bet you number two is going to be Stephen. He's like, man, I, I got to tell you about this crazy guy. 
We were stoning him. We were trying to kill him. In fact, we did kill him. But the whole time, he kept his eyes fixed on Jesus. And then I bet Paul's going to say something like, man, you don't know how badly that hacked off the Jewish leaders. They didn't get any, any, get any satisfaction on killing him because he still won. Because he didn't bend and he didn't break. He kept his eyes fixed on Jesus. So the more we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the more we're going to upset the enemy and the more rocks he's going to throw. But the more we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the deeper we fall in love with Jesus, we aren't even going to feel the rocks anymore. We're just going to ignore them. Because when we have our eyes fixated on Jesus, we're in true love relationship with Jesus Christ. We forget about everything else around us. Church, that's what we have to do. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling out on God and saying, God, please help me and stop this, right? No. Stephen was in love with Jesus and Stephen saw Jesus and Stephen said, I'm good. I'm good, Jesus. What did he cry out? He said this. Lord, Jesus, receive my spirit. In his deepest, darkest moments, he said, God, I submit everything I am, who I am, what I am, all I have, I submit it to you. Right now, maybe right now, you are in your darkest, deepest moments. Right now is where you need to be like Stephen, and you need to cry out to God and say, God, receive my spirit. But it gets better. And then he knelt down. Okay, here, here he's going to ask for a kingdom. Here's where he's going to say, please stop. And he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not ch charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Isn't that beautiful how Jesus, when we're in a love relationship with Jesus Christ, when we're walking with Jesus Christ, isn't it beautiful how Jesus just protects us? We don't read that he died an agonizing, slow, painful death. We don't read that he bled out and his blood spilled all over the temple floor. We don't read that his skull was crushed and, and badly man mangled and you couldn't identify him. read here that he just fell asleep. And isn't that beautiful? How many people want to just fall asleep? It's like my mom. My mom, I mean, she died the perfect death. Her last meal was chocolate ice cream, Diet Coke, and then she just fell asleep. I'm like, man, sign me up for that. Please, God. In and out shake. <laughs> Oh, I'm dying. Double, double. Right? <laughs> but I think we miss, we miss what that means right there, church. If we stay connected to Jesus Christ, if we stay in love with Jesus Christ, then Jesus will protect us from the damage that sin will try to cause us. Jesus will cover us so that the sin doesn't get into us. Jesus doesn't uh, will cover us so that the sin can't kill us. See, we all say we do battle with the enemy, but you know what? Here's my concern. I worry that not all of us are doing battle with the enemy. I worry that some of us are doing battle with God. God, I get what you're saying. I Trust me, one day, God, one day I will do that. we will never be successful battling God. Just so we're clear. But the enemy tricks us and deceives us and says, well, you, what you're doing is okay. It's going to be fine. And all the while, God says, I'm watching. 
By the way, little serpent, I got you once, I'm going to get you again. See, we like to, uh, especially here in LA, we like to be on the bandwagon, right? If the Clippers are doing well, I see all the Clipper flags. If it's the Lakers, I see the Laker flags. If it's the Indian, you know, right? So we always want to be with the winner. Then why in our own personal lives and our spiritual lives do we choose the loser? This message isn't meant to convict anybody, but this message, I hope and I pray, is an answer and a wake-up call for people that have been living a life for too long that they thought they could get along with. And I, and I believe this is for someone, because if you look at my notes, this is nothing compared to what I wrote. Now I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I spent a lot of time writing a sermon I don't get to give, right? But I believe this <coughs> message is for somebody or people here, maybe on Facebook Live. That you've been living this double life. That the enemy has been throwing stones at you. And too often you have been succumbing to the pressure. Too often you have been bending and you've been breaking and you've been compromising. But God is here to say today that if you are going to be successful in your battles, if you're going to survive, you must have your eyes fixated on Jesus Christ and you must have that love relationship with Jesus Christ that nobody can get in the way of. And I don't think, and that's why we're doing true, I don't even think we understand what that is because we define God's love by the love relationships we have. We're like, oh, that's it. No thanks, I'm good. Right? <laughs> but God's love for you is so much more. Scott's saying it. God is madly in love with you. You know what you did yesterday? God is madly in love with you. You know what you did today? God is madly in love with you. You know what you're going to do tomorrow? God is madly in love with you. We can't define His love. We can't describe His love. We can't even understand His love. But church, all we have to know is that we have it. And all God says is, I need you to love me that way. I need you to love me above everybody else. And here's the beautiful thing. If we can love, if we can love God that way, if we can love God the way that He wants to be loved, if we can love God the way that the Bible tells us we can, we need to love Him. If we can love God by serving Him, submitting to Him, and sacrificing for Him, then we can love anybody that way. But church, it starts with God. Stephen, in my opinion, is a perfect example of love. It's not faith. It's not courage. I might say it's not even stupidity. It was love. A sacrificial love that said, I will give you everything, God. I will give you my life. I will give you my future. I will give you everything because of my love for you. And right now, God is saying to you, I want that from you. Those stones that have been thrown at you, what? I'm just going to keep that one. What? Got that one. You start putting, what? 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 God is saying, I need you to give me those stones. I need you to stop loving the sin in your life, and I need you to start loving me. I need you to stop looking at all the junk here in the, on, on the, the, in the world, and I need you to have your eyes fixated on me. This is for somebody here. This is for people here. I know this. In church, the sad reality is that we don't get many opportunities to do the right thing. We don't get many opportunities to get it do a redo. But for someone or people here today, today is your redo. So my question is this, what is stopping you today from truly having that love relationship with Jesus Christ? What is stopping you today from saying, God, I will submit everything to you? What is stopping you today from saying, God, I love you more than I love the sin in my life, and I will stop the sin in my life so that I can have that love relationship with you? Church, what is stopping you today from falling in love with God? Is it fear? What people might think? I don't want to be that Christian. I never want to be that Christian. Is it addiction? Does sin have such a grip over you that you can't imagine a day without it? Is 
Is it a lack of faith and trust? Not believing what God's word says? Not believing that if we have a true love relationship with Jesus Christ and we keep our eyes fixed, not believing that it will be more beneficial for us? See, we think, we think that a relationship with Jesus Christ is sacrificial for us. Really? How do you think he felt on the cross? See, a relationship with Jesus Christ is not a sacrifice for us. Amen? A relationship with Jesus Christ should be a blessing in our life. If we truly love Jesus, if we follow Jesus, if we honor and serve Him, church, it will never seem like a sacrifice to you. So why people, those crazy people that run marathons and they run like 15 miles a day, I'm like, you're nuts. Oh no, this is great. I love it. People that do other things. Oh no, this is so awesome. I love it. Church, if we have that relationship with Jesus Christ, then it's the same thing. No, you mean you don't go to that place? No, I go to church, man. It's so cool. You mean you don't listen to that music? No, no, man. I listen to, to praise and worship music all the time. You mean you don't read those magazines? No, no, man. I read the Bible, God's Word. Have you ever read the Bible? But what's stopping you today from having that crazy, sacrificial, madly true love relationship with Jesus Christ? See, I believe that there are people out here, maybe on Facebook Live, that God is speaking to right now in your hearts. All those stones we don't talk about, right? God is gently reminding you about. And I believe that God is saying, it's time. It's time. It's time. Scott and guys, if you want to come on up here. For those of you here today and in Facebook, it's time. Whatever you're going through, God says it's time. Whatever you've been struggling with, God says it's time. Whatever failures you have had, God says it's time. <coughs> Whatever lies you have believed about from the enemy, God says it's time. And I think it's perfect that we're doing communion today because do you, do you truly, truly understand what the definition of communion is? We think it's it's hopefully some decent juice and oh, dear Lord, please not that bread again, right? Mary, did you guys have that bread that one time, man? I had to leave. I had to go out and get coffee. I'm like, what is this thing? I thought it was just me. But do you know what the true definition of communion is? The, the true definition of communion does not mention bread and it does not mention juice. The true definition of communion is this intimate time with Jesus Christ. Technically, technically, we should be able to have communion without ever eating bread or drinking juice. Why? Because anytime we have intimate time with Jesus Christ, then we are having communion with Jesus Christ. And that's what I want us to do right now. I want us to have that intimate time with Jesus Christ. I want those people that God is speaking to right now saying, it's time, it's time to really listen to Him. I want those people that have been struggling with sin and addiction in their lives to finally say, you know what, God, I can't do it anymore. And I want those people that have felt like they've never been loved in their life to begin a true love relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I don't want you to think like, oh, this whole church. No. But if we're going to have that deep, meaningful relationship with Jesus Christ, then we've got to be in love with Him, right? I 
want you to take time right now. Don't worry, God hasn't given you any names. So I go, don't worry, please don't worry. Too. You can say last week, ultimately, the only person I can save is myself. Ultimately, the only person you can save is yourself. But for those of you that have been living that life where you're the stone catcher, right? Do you know if tomorrow's guaranteed? Do you know if today's guaranteed? You know, I'm a chaplain, and it was in the news, so it's not, but we had an incident this week. What is, in the blink of an eye, in the blink of an eye, people die. Which, 30 seconds earlier, nobody thought it was going to happen. Do you honestly, honestly think that you can walk out of this church not being right with God and think you're going to have time to get right with God? God says it's time. It's time. You've been getting beaten up. You've had too many thrown, stones thrown at you. It's time right now to receive me as your Lord and Savior. It's time right now to fall in love with me and have your eyes fixated on me. Because church, the stones are a common and they're only going to get worse. And if we don't have the covering and protection of Jesus Christ, we are never going to survive it. So as they hand out the communion, I want you to spend time with Jesus Christ. I want you to be intimate with Jesus Christ. I want you to have those conversations with Jesus Christ. And I want you to allow Jesus to have those conversations with you. And when you're ready, and I know what's going to happen, and when you're ready, I want you to come up here so we can pray with you. We want to introduce you to a pretty awesome, cool guy. His name is Jesus. He loves you so much. He wrote an entire book just to you. Love letters every day. Right? We get upset. We start dating someone and then you don't send me flowers anymore. You don't send me letters anymore. Right? Jesus wrote a whole book just for you. You never think of me anymore. Did you know that Jesus thought of you before he thought of the universe? How crazy is that? You don't even know me. Jesus knows the number of hairs on your head. So after you've spent time with Jesus, I want you to come on and I want you to pray. And if you're on Facebook Live, if this is you, I want you just to put your hands up as we pray later. I want you to put your hands up and I want you to receive Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior. And I want you to begin that love relationship with Him. So this isn't a time of seeing. This isn't a time of raising our hands. I want you to keep your eyes closed. Go ahead and sit. Especially Roxy and Kevin, you guys just stay down. It's time, church. It's time to get real. It's time to get meaningful. It's time to be sacrificial.